I cannot believe this hack worked and it was made from old pencils. <laughs> craziest idea the other day. I'm working on a picture of the Mandalorian and he's wearing a helmet and body gear all made out of metal. So I said to myself, what can I use as an undercoat to give me an advantage on the metal? And I was like, rub and buff. I've never tried rub and buff on a fine art picture. And nobody has, nobody uses rub and buff on a on a picture. So I got out my rub and buff. This stuff is about 12 years old. And I got out my silver. And much to my dismay, this is what I had. The tube had dried up completely. That's how long it has been. I checked on Amazon. I purchased this 12 years ago. So that's what I had. And here I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I only need a teeny tiny bit. What can I do to reconstitute this? Who reconstitutes 12-year-old pigment? Rub and Buff is a wax. And if you've never used Rub and Buff, it's awesome stuff. How could I reanimate it? And I thought to myself, well, you know what? Pencils break down in Dalar and Rooney. I was like, I wonder what would happen if I added the tiniest bit of Dalar and Rooney to this. Would I get a pigment? So that's what I did. I put it in a bag. Just like this, I went into my garage because I only reconstituted half of it. I took a hammer and I cracked it up until it was like a powder. I came back in, got out one of these little tubes that I have that I put paint in so that I can recap it. And you can get these on Amazon. They're really cheap. They, they're for like lip gloss and uh, producing your own cream or whatever. But they're great for paint. So I put the powder in here. I added a bit of this stirred it up and I waited and a day went by and I actually forgot about it and I was going to order a new tub of it and when I opened it up this is what I had liquid silver gorgeous how am I going to use this this is probably reconstituted for two days and it's thick on the bottom needs a little stirring so I was like okay I'm going to just use it like rub and buff on a tissue I got out actually a q-tip Took some of the cotton off of it so the cotton didn't absorb all the water. Dipped it in, and this is what I got. Gorgeous. Perfect. That's all I needed for my whole picture. Look at this. I'm going to have it all over my hands. Yes, I know. What happens if I need to color over it, which is what I'm going to have to do to shade the picture? You know, you don't just paint on it and then that's it. When I went to color over it, it shaded up beautifully. Now this is a graphite pencil and you can shade it. It's taking graphite. Will it take colored pencil? And let's see. Yes, it does. It accepts colored pencil. Now it's best to wait until this stuff dries. I'm doing it when it's fresh, but I can shade. Perfect. So there was my idea. I'm going to reconstitute this. I'm going to use it. It's going to be perfect. Then I got one of my brilliant ideas. What is the difference between this wax paste and pencil? Now that's where it was like, I don't know the total chemistries, but I do know that wax breaks down in paint thinner. So I got out my Downy Rooney and I got out a nibby. Not only a nibby, but I also have a whole bunch of cores that I really am inventing things to do with because I've got so much of it. And I went and I did it with some gold and I waited 24 hours, nibbies, and this is what I got. Stir it up, look at that, gorgeous. 24 hours in the solution. How does it work? Beautiful, look at that. That was just a tiny bit. I said, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I used a brush. Gorgeous, that worked. Now I got a little bit crazier and I got out some of my cores. Now you can get cores by using your nibbies, your shorties. And all you do to get that core out of that shorty, look, look at this. This is one of the nibbies that I had in my little nibby box. In fact, that pencil, that nibby that most people either throw away or leave sitting because you know you're going to need another one. I took the X-Acto knife. Well, I'm going to use a green one. 
peels easier than fruit. Just like that. When I get a chunk like this, I just break it off. So I took the pink, and you can see I still have one of the little chunks still breaking up. You could either put it in a bag and crack it up, or I also have this, which is one of the heavier dotting tools that I have with a flat surface, a mortar, a pencil, 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 pencil. You know what I'm talking about. And you just grind it up. This is not even 24 hours old. The longer you let it sit, the better and more pigmented it becomes. And I decided I was going to test it on paper. Here's the star. Get out a clean Q-tip. Take some of the cotton off the top. And let's see. Now, I was curious about this on what it was going to do to cheap coloring book paper. Is it going to curl it? So I don't think you get any cheaper than this. And the paper is basically computer paper. Not a drop of wear on the paper. Not a drop of curl. Where it dried, this is wet and this is wet. Nothing on the back. This will eventually dry up. How does it take pencil? Go in with your pencil for a second layer. You've not destroyed your tooth. You've not curled your paper. Look how beautiful it takes. Beautiful. Now just let that dry. Let's think. What can I add to that to give it a finish? Got out some mica powder. Give it a sparkle. Now it's very hard to catch this in the light. This is ultra sparkly. Give it a pinch of mica powder. Stir it up. You can see that iridescence forming on the top. That beautiful rich pink. Imagine how that's going to be in 24 hours. Gorgeous. Gorgeous.